Hello, hockey fans, and welcome to another edition of the Heat this week. I am your host, Brandon Astell. On this week's show, the Heat returned from a six-game road trip, and we have an exciting recap of two games between the Heat and the Utica Comets. New Heat forward and Flames first-round pick, Morgan Klimchuk is this week's player profile, and Heat rookie Josh Juris has some fun in rapid fire. All that and more to come right here on the Heat this week on Shot TV. off a lengthy 12-game season series with the Utica Comets on the recent road trip. Leading up to the last two games, the two teams have played some exciting hockey, and on Friday, March 28th, it was no different. Run into in front of the bench by Garnet Hathaway, and the puck back in the Utica zone. Hathaway steals it away, thrown to the front, saved by Erickson, and he grabs the rebound out of the air. Now some rough stuff at the side of the net as a crowd gathering in the Comets' crease. Welsh trying to barrel through. He's got Friesen. Gave it to him. Friesen's in. He curls back looking for a shot. Steps around the defender. Drags it all the way behind the net. Looking for a scoring chance now. He'll curl off into the corner. Friesen behind the goal line. Right in front with the shot. He scores! What a pass from Jeremy Welsh! And the Comets score shorthanded and take a 1-0 lead. Comets blue line. Looking for a trailing Smith. Here is Smith near side with a shot. Kick save made by Erickson. Link puck. Huskins has to hurry. It is Corey Locke closing in with a shot on goal, and Erickson will hang on. Puts it out to the blue line. Smith floats it across glove down by DeFazio. Here come the Comets. Two on one. DeFazio and Grenier. DeFazio closing in. Drags and shoots, and Ordeal makes a glove save. Then play to O'Brien, seven seconds left. Forced in front, a save from Erickson's right toe, and the Comets clear it away. Two seconds and then one, and they score, or do they? Came through from Friesen, and Malay just tried to shovel it on. Goal, he came through with a huge hit, knocking down Olsen. And a fight breaks out, Malay and Banks will go. Malay trying to fire up the club. And he gives an uppercut to Banks. He knocked his helmet off. Malay, a tough customer, when he drops the mitts. And he got a right free and another one. Banks trying to back away. Malay coming hard after him. Takes a shot. That one block came to Sobe. Sobe in. Hit the post. Bouncing puck. Here's O'Reilly. He's got Grenier. 18 on the clock. O'Reilly dropped it to Fazio. Shot. Rebound kicked away by Ordeo. 13 seconds to go. Right hard. Run over. Solve it. Here is Street to the right side for Reinhardt. Got in around Peltier. Reinhardt with a shot. Kicked away by Erickson. The rebound they score. Abbotsford has won the game in overtime. There you have it. Ben Street recording his third overtime winner this season, which is a new Abbotsford Heat franchise record. The Heat have been very busy on the transaction wire this past week. The big one was Morgan Klimchuk being assigned from the Flames to the Heat, and he will make his pro hockey debut this weekend. Morgan was the Flames' 28th overall pick in last June's NHL entry draft. He had 74 points in 57 games with the Regina Pats, as his team is coming off a first-round sweep to the hands of the Brandon Wheat Kings. Also joining the Heat are two defensemen in Brett Kulak and Zach Tolkinen, and also a forward Colin Valcourt. Kulak, he played at junior hockey just down the street with the Vancouver Giants and is coming off a career-best 60 points and should be a familiar name with Heat fans as he appeared in four regular season games last season. As for Tolkinen, he just wrapped up his four-year career at Quinnipiac University and is coming off a career-best 22 points in 36 games. And for Colin Valcourt, the forward, he came from the WHL, splitting his season with Saskatoon and Prince Albert and recorded 72 points in 71 games. With new faces coming in, that means a few had to be let go, and they were Brett Lyon and Kyle Ostro, who were released from the professional tryout. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I go one-on-one -on -one with recently mentioned Morgan Klimchuk in this week's player profile. 
Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Heat this week on Shaw TV. Last summer, Morgan Klimchuk experienced every player's dream growing up playing the game of hockey, which is being drafted by your hometown team. We caught up with a 19-year-old to get his thoughts on his hockey journey. Morgan, just what exactly are your memories at an early age about playing the game of hockey? Uh, it started real young for me. I think my parents are both real big hockey fans and they kind of introduced me to the sport. And you know, some, some pictures I've seen, things like that. I used to walk around the kitchen with my skates on, kind of shoot fruits and vegetables around, whatever I had with a mini stick. And like I said, I, from a very young age, I was just in love with the game and always had, always had skates on or a stick in my hands. Is there any certain kind of memory that stands out uh, looking back at your minor hockey career? Um, yeah, there was one. It was actually Father's Day. We were playing in a tournament, and I don't remember the tournament's name or anything like that. But it was it was it was the finals, and we went to a shootout, and I scored the winner on Father's Day. So my dad was pretty excited about that. You know, not a lot of real fond memories of minor hockey because it was so long ago. But that's one that really sticks out for me. At what point in your career? What age did you figure, hey, I wouldn't mind making a career out of this game? Uh, real, real young, I think, probably in Pee Wee. Um, you know, I obviously grew up watching the Hitmen and grew up watching the Flames, and kind of understand understood from a very young age that, that it was a career choice and an opportunity to play professional hockey is, you know, it's an honor for sure, and that's something that I've been working towards ever since I'd say Pee Wee. Looking back at last year's NHL entry draft, you're a kid growing up in Calgary, and you are one of the rare people to get drafted by your hometown team. Just describe that feeling of putting on that flame sweater on draft day. Yeah, that was that was an honor for sure. I think uh, to get drafted is one thing, and then to go in the first round is another, and then to be picked by your hometown team is something that you, you do honestly dream about as a kid. And for that to come true on draft day was it was an unbelievable experience, and the emotions were you know hard to put into words for sure. How much do you owe the Regina Pats organization, obviously the team that you're playing for right now in your WHL career? A lot. Yeah, you come into the Western League and. You know, you have a whole new coaching staff, whole new team, and a whole new lead to get used to. And they've been, they did a very good job over the past three seasons for me, kind of getting me accustomed to not just playing there, but succeeding there. And, you know, the coaches I've had along the way, I've had a couple different head coaches and a couple assistant coaches that I owe a lot of credit to, and I got a lot of respect for what they've done for me. So your season unfortunately came to an end, but you get assigned from the Flames to the Abbotsford Heath, and you're going to get your first taste of a professional hockey. Just overall, how excited are you? Uh, I'm very excited. I think it's a big opportunity, and it's going to be a challenge for sure, but you know, it's something I'm always looking forward to is to, to playing at a higher level, and you know, that's, what, that's what I'm looking to do this coming summer and next season. So any experience I can get right now, anything I can learn, I'm definitely going to soak in and, and use that to my advantage going forward. And finally, Morgan, just describe to the Heat fans who haven't seen you play just what they can expect on a nightly basis. Well, it's one of the things I've really been trying to work on as a player is rounding out my two-way game. I think this year I was pretty solid on both sides of the puck, but at the end of the day, I do take pride in, in scoring goals, whether that's you know setting it up or putting it in the net myself. So you know, I like to say I have no offensive side to my game, but I'm also a solid two-way player. It's been a player profile with Morgan Klimchuk. Time now to talk to another Heat forward in Josh Juris. Last time we talked to Josh, he and his roommates were taking us on a tour of his house in Abbotsford. Here he is in this week's Rapid Fire. Josh, favorite hockey team growing up? Detroit Red Wings. Who's your favorite player? Uh, Stevie Y. What's the best part about being in the pros? Uh, the free time. Favorite thing to do in your hometown of Burlington, Ontario? Uh, probably just hang out at home and play with my dogs. <laughs> Who's a better roommate, Corbin Knight or Ben Hanowski? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I got to give it to them both. They're great roommates, both of them. If the Heat were on Survivor, who would be the first player voted off the island? <laughs> uh, Turner Elson. What's your worst habit if you had to pick one? Uh, biting my nails. I'm a big nail biter. Why do you wear number 17? Uh, it was given to me. I'm usually uh, 19, uh, so yeah. What's your favorite memory about uh, playing at Union? Uh, just the, uh, the camaraderie with the guys, the brotherhood you develop, and uh, just uh, you know the college atmosphere. It's a good time. What's been the best vacation destination for yourself? Probably Florida. I went to Sarasota when I was growing up with my family, so that's a good, uh, good spot. Who's your pick to win the Stanley Cup? Ooh, uh, I'm going to say the Sharks. What is your favorite type of junk food? Uh, Nutella. Best thing you cook? 
Oh, Got to be my pregame meal. It's probably my only one in my uh, my repertoire. So my uh, my penne pasta meal. What's the most embarrassing song on your iPod? Uh, I got a lot. I mean, I kind of got everything. I got a lot of music on there for my sister, and she likes a lot of uh, little kid music. So. <laughs> and finally, Josh, if you can go out to dinner with any two people in the world, past or present, who are they? Oh, uh, well, one's got to be Steve Eisman, love that guy, and. Uh, Oof. Probably Beyonce Knowles or maybe Rihanna, Shakira too. I like them all. <laughs> so a four-person dinner. Yeah, we'll make it that. <laughs> this has been Rapid Fire with Josh Jarris. Time for one last break. On the other side, we got highlights of game number 12 between the Heat and Comets. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Heat this week on Shaw TV. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. March 29th at the Utica Memorial Auditorium was the last game of a marathon season series between the Heat and Comets. And this game in particular did not follow the same trend that occurred in previous games. Here's a look at the highlights. Right near the point of origin and the Heat have it at center. 1440 left here in the period. Two on one for Abbotsford. Corbin Knight with a shot. Erickson a save. Went wide as well, then Hathaway shot, skipped over to Miller. Miller's shot, stopped by Erickson, rebound up to the line, but not across it. To the right side, blocked by Huskins, back in front, they score. There's Anderson, out of the zone to freeze it. Left side, Welsh. Welsh winds and shoots, he scores! Jeremy Welsh fires it in just 30 seconds into the second period. Run up against the boards by Alex Biega. Near side, Welsh will skate with it. His first shift since the Comets' first goal. Turned over, street to Reinhardt, to a trailer, and a shot from Davies, he scores. Kevin Kloss back in the studio. I'm Brendan Burke, a chance at the front, and they tip this one in. He got his pocket picked, and here's a breakaway for Olsen. Straight away, Elon Erickson, Olsen backhand, forehand, scores. What a nice poke by Zachary Davies. Sets up a two-on-one for Abbotsford. Into the slot, played across for Juris. Back in front, in the crease, they jam it in. But here is Josh Juris with a chance to make it 6-1. Right-handed shot, wide right. Goes to the backhand, he scores! Over the blocker of Kanata. Hawkins takes a hard hit, gloves are off. Jan Sove and Tim Miller finally doing battle. This started earlier in the night, and Sove got a couple of good shots in there on Miller. Lands an uppercut, got another one across and knocked into his knees. Miller back up and takes some more. Sove continues to work on Miller. And he'll take a seat. Boy, Jan Sove dropped Tim Miller with a good one. Sven Berchi in left side. Angled off by Biega. They find a trailing O'Brien who shoots and scores his stick broken as he overskates it to Fazio and Friesen. Want to push this one offensively. Friesen has a trailer. Biega scores! That will do it for this week's show. The Heat begin a four-game homestand starting this weekend against the Rockford Ice Hogs. And on Friday, former Canuck great Brendan Morrison will be honored in a last installment of Legends of Hockey. Next week, we will be back to break it all down and much, much more. I am Brandon Astle. As for now, you are up to date with the Abbotsford Heat. See you at the rink. Whoops.